Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. We're identical twins, so you have to financially support my kid. After that, my wife rejected my son's very thoughtful birthday gift, so I canceled her party. And after that, am I the jerk for wanting my wife to make my dinner? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen does not get to scam anyone for child support. That's what you think, Reddit boy. You'll be hearing from my lawyer shortly. So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. We're identical twins, so you have to financially support my kid. Okay, so this isn't my story. This is my best friend Tommy. All names have been changed. Tommy and I became best friends in middle school. We bonded over the fact that we're both identical twins who have a horrible twin sibling. Tommy's brother Jack is a deadbeat who thinks everything should be handed to him. He also is a huge player and has a new girlfriend every few months. This eventually came back to get him when he got one of them pregnant. Now, Jack has no job and he lives with his parents who completely support him. But when they found out that he had got his girlfriend pregnant, they made it clear that he had to get a job if he wanted to stay there. His girlfriend, Abby, also has no job and has the same attitude as Jack. Neither of them wants to work and they both believe everyone else should be supporting them. Tommy has a good job and he makes good money, which absolutely upsets Jack. When they found out Abby was pregnant, they asked Tommy for a substantial amount of money. Tommy refused, which caused Jack to get mad again. This caused them to come up with an insane plan to get money out of Tommy. One day, they confronted Tommy and told him that if he didn't give them the money, they'd just say that he was the father and go after him for child support. They read a story online where a woman actually did end up getting child support from two identical twins because they couldn't figure out who was the father. From what Tommy told me, they had pretty smug looks on their faces when they told him. Here's a sum of how the conversation went. Now, I'm assuming this from what Tommy told me, so it definitely won't be word for word, but it pretty much went like this. They were at a party for one of Tommy and Jack's relatives when Jack and Abby came up to Tommy and said, Jack, Sir, have you changed your mind about giving us the money? Tommy, no. Jack, we figured you'd say that, so we have another plan. Tommy, what plan? Jack, well, since you won't give us the money, we thought of another idea. What are you talking about? Jack, Abby read online about how a woman was able to get child support from two identical twin brothers. Because DNA-wise, they can't tell who the father was. So, we're going to tell people you're the father? And since your DNA is the same as mine, any test will come out positive. Tommy was a little shocked when they first said this. Not because he was worried, but because he'd realized his brother was even dumber than he thought he was. Tommy, I know you smoke a lot, and who knows what else you do, but you seriously can't be this dumb. Jack, I'm not dumb, I'm a genius. It worked before, look it up. Tommy, yeah, but you're forgetting a very important factor in all of this. What's that? The whole having cancer as a teenager thing, the countless rounds of chemo, the multiple surgeries. Nice try, but people can still have kids. Look it up. This caused Tommy to start laughing. Jack, why are you laughing? Tommy, because you idiot. I had testicular cancer and had to have both of them removed. I have literally been sterile for over 13 years. Well, they don't know about that. Tommy, my medical history does. All I have to do is show them and the case will easily be thrown out. This made Jack and Abby mad and they started belittling Tommy, calling him every name in the book. For those worried about the baby, they eventually ended up putting the baby up for adoption. So yeah, as a few pointed out, the girlfriend's name changes in the middle. That's because I messed up and put the real name, so I had to fix it. My bad. My wife rejected my son's very thoughtful birthday gift so I canceled her party. I, male 36, remarried after my late wife passed. I have a son who's 15. My current wife and I have been together for two years. She generally has a good relationship with my son, although they tend to have some disagreements from time to time. My son has background in arts that involves wood. He used to help his grandfather with his woodworking and learned how to make handmade wooden items and uses them as gifts. I planned a dinner party for my wife's birthday at a prestigious restaurant. The day before the party, she was cleaning my son's room and saw what he got her for her birthday, and that was a wooden tree with mine, hers, and his name on it. 
She talked with him and told him while she thought it was a sweet gift, she asked that he not bring it to the restaurant and give it to her there. Why? No idea. When my son told me this, I just had to call her out on it. She flat out said that she thought the gift looked ridiculous and she didn't want it to be seen in that prestigious restaurant or in front of her guests. I lost it on her and I told her that she should be ashamed of herself for saying this when my son was being sincere and thoughtful. She swore she wasn't ashamed nor embarrassed by his work and even said she'll take the gift but she simply didn't want it to be seen there. I told her not to worry about it since I decided to cancel the whole thing. She went off on me, calling me unreasonable for outright canceling her birthday over such a trivial thing. I refused to keep arguing, but she threw a fit about how I ruined her birthday and made her lose respect for me and my promises. My son kept the gift since she left the house two days ago, and her mom has been chewing me out for my decision and calling me a jerk for treating her daughter like this. It could be that it was not a big deal and I overreacted, but my son was feeling hurt by her request. Holy cow! Not the jerk at all. Your wife doesn't sound like a very kind person at all, but incredibly shallow and cruel. This calls for a, what the heck is wrong with her? If I had a stepkid for two years and this was the gift I got, I would be bawling. It would be the best present I ever got. You want me to be a part of your family tree after you lost your mom? The only way that gifting me that present would ruin my birthday dinner is because I'd cry the makeup off of my face into the filet mignon. Not the jerk. Thank you for having your sons back in all of this. That means more than you know. Cancel the whole marriage. Am I the jerk for wanting my wife to make my dinner? Me, male 25, and my wife of over a year, female 26, we've been together for over four years. We've always had a good relationship with each other. It has felt very love-filled. We recently got into an apartment, one bedroom, about 700 square feet, so it's not huge. Once this happened, I feel like things may have shifted. I work very long hours throughout the week, with sometimes only one or maybe zero days off in the week, average of 75 to 80 hours a week. I bring home a majority of the money. My paychecks cover almost 80% of our whole income, not that it affects how I think of her in our relationship. She's able to provide things like fun groceries, snacks and sweets, and when we go out she can pay for things like the tip or drinks, and I really appreciate that and I tell her thank you when she can swing it. She also does most of the chores in the small apartment. Other than that, I'm the person paying for our life. Groceries, toiletries, outings, clothes, makeup, and not to mention rent and all other real bills. She works in a very different field and works three, sometimes if her job requires, four days a week. She's working towards her career and I'm proud of her on this. Most days, she'll work an average of six, maybe seven hours on her work days. This is where the problem has started. A lot of my work nights are late, 12 or 1 a.m. when I get home. I'll pack snacks, but I never get to eat. So a lot of days, I come home hungry for an actual meal. Recently, those nights have been more frequent, and I just don't want to have to cook something for myself after a 13-hour day after doing the same all week. I just want to be able to eat with the minimal amount of work when I get home. The other night, I came home around 1.30 a.m., and found my wife passed out on the couch with an empty personal pizza from Little Caesars. I got excited, thinking that I had a cold one in the fridge waiting for me. Wrong. Annoyed, but not upset, I microwave some Chef Boyardee, scarf it down, and call it a night. The next day, I have the same kind of night. Around 1.30, I get home. There she is, passed out, now with a bowl of macaroni and weenies, one of my favorites. And again, nothing in the fridge for me. Not understanding why she couldn't just make enough for the both of us and put my bowl in the fridge, I woke her up to ask. She gets a little snappy if someone wakes her up, but this time she was really angry, saying that she is not my maid and I'm being lazy trying to make her cook for me. I tell her I'm just hungry after a long day and it upsets me to see that she cooked for herself and didn't think about me at all. I said she was being inconsiderate and that really set her off, saying if I want a slave, then she's not it. I told her I don't want a slave, I want someone who seems to care about me. She looked at me with a shocked face and stormed out. Her mother texted saying that she showed up at their house bawling and how I should be more considerate of her feelings. I haven't even responded because I just feel hurt and not cared for. I just wanted dinner. Am I the jerk? Edit. I really should have mentioned this is a conversation we have had before and I feel ignored since she barely acknowledges when I've brought it up. 
These last two times are after multiple conversations. Also, definitely didn't want to seem like she shouldn't be sleeping at 1. Passed out is just terminology I use. If I'm dead asleep at 4 a.m., I'm passed out. I appreciate the other things she does for me, like cleaning, but the other 8 hours of free time in her day, I wanted to be thought of since I would do the same for her, no questions asked. You're the jerk. Saying she doesn't care about you when she does all kinds of other things for you, chores, dates, etc., is very belittling. I'd be upset with you too. I feel like you could have asked way nicer. I also think you should maybe consider meal planning for yourself if 1am is not a good time for you to cook. You're the jerk. You can absolutely ask her to cook for you, but interrupting a necessary physical activity like sleep just to ask her why she didn't cook and then accuse her of being inconsiderate and not loving you? You pick the completely wrong way to handle this conversation. OP, learn to take a no. Your wife isn't required to take on making your dinner in addition to everything else she's already doing. You say you appreciate all the things your wife already does, but she is clearly not feeling appreciated if she feels like your slave. My vote stands. You're the jerk. Just because you work past midnight doesn't mean you get to throw a fit when you come home and don't see food. You shouldn't wake someone up in the middle of the night just to ask why was your meal not prepared, especially when there was no prior discussion on this. There's nothing wrong with wanting your partner to prepare some dinner you can eat after you return from work at 1.30 a.m. Just discuss it with her like adults beforehand. Waking her up in the middle of the night and throwing a tantrum is not the way to go. Not the jerk. I hope lots of younger guys see this story and realize that marriage is a complete joke these days. It used to mean finding a partner to have a family with, who you protect and support financially, and in return you actually got something out of it like a loving wife who enjoyed spending 30 minutes a night making a meal for the family as a display of her love. These days, getting married just means you now have no choice other than to shut up and bow down to her every spoiled and entitled whim or risk getting divorced and lose half your stuff that you worked hard for while she just benefited from. Happened to me, my brother, and most of our friends. Marriage in 2023, not even once. You're the jerk. She's right, she's not your maid. You seriously mean to tell me you're working 80 hours a week and can't even afford to stop and pick up some McDonald's on the way home like a big boy? I swear, if my husband tried to toddler tantrum crap like this with me, he'd be single in a heartbeat and he knows it. A real man would get home and cook his own food, then cook extra for her in case she's hungry. Don't be surprised when she leaves you for a real man who's not afraid to cook his own meal every now and then. I can't help but wonder if the roles were reversed, if people would still be- Whoa, 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 you can't say that, Karen. That, that really ticks off the Reddit people. Leave the floor wet? All right, enjoy your rotten wood. Back in the early 2000s, my mother, 40 female, worked as a cleaner for a couple places and took me, 13 male, with her to help. One place we worked for was the only real estate place in town. We cleaned up before the people who worked there got in. When I started there, it was small and somewhat dirty. Old smelly cubicle partitions and faded brown off-color walls, ingrained dirt in the linoleum. We cleaned, and I literally couldn't tell the difference after we were done, except the mirror in the washroom not having any spots on it and the floor being wet from the fresh mopping. Then the town started becoming a cottage town, and it decided that they will move to a nicer place. Cottagers might find the griminess a little off-putting. New place had a bit more space, brand new blue cubicle partitions, newly painted walls that still smelled the first day I cleaned in there, and a cheap hardwood panel floor. That floor was a bit of a problem. See, before, when we mopped, we would just leave the water to dry on the linoleum. We could do that because we got there at about 6.30 and they opened at 7.30. The place was small enough that it was mopped by around 7 before we left and would mostly be dry by the time people started arriving. If we did the same thing for this cheap wood floor, my mother was worried we would have water seep into the cracks between the wood panels and rot them. So a new method for mopping was devised. First, I dunk the mop, then ring the mop lightly. Mop up, ring the mop again, but fully this time, and then mop up as much of the excess water as possible. This new method actually visibly got a lot more water off the floor. By the time we left, some of the earlier mopped areas would look mostly dry. Good solution, mom. Couple weeks into the new place, my mother gets contacted by the manager and a new order comes in that we are not to dry the floor. I asked if she explained why we dried it. She had. I found this order a bit baffling at the time 
and it only occurred to me today the reason why he ordered this. The manager got in earlier than everyone else at about 7.15, so I actually saw him a few rare times when we ran late. The old floor would have still been visibly wet in the old place when he got in. The new floor was now dry when he got in. He thought we were skipping mopping in order to leave early. Even though I didn't understand at the time that he thought we weren't doing our job, I, of course, found this new order stupid. I thought, he wants the floors wet when he gets in? Fine. Cue malicious compliance. You see, I did the mopping while my mom cleaned the washroom because I was a young strapping lad and she was my mom, so I did what she said. I now had a standing order from the boss to leave a wet floor and I was going to do so. From that day forth, not only did I not dry the floor, I now didn't even wring the mop after dunking it. I dipped it in the water and just let water slop off the mop as I pulled it directly out of the bucket. There was no way this was going to dry before he got in. Probably not for an hour after he got in either. Two weeks after I started doing this, lo and behold, the wood paneling is already starting to separate at the seams. Dirt is accumulating between tiles. It proves impossible to remove. I was a bit shocked at the time at how fast that had happened. Four weeks into the new mopping routine, the floor was rotting. Was my mother psychic or what? It was apparently very cheap fiberboard with a paper-thin plastic wood grain pattern on it. I would have guessed a laminate wood grain on top of semi-waterproof fiberboard if you had asked me four weeks ago. The floor now has visible divots and lines where the plastic paper sink into the deteriorating wood underneath. These trap dirt in them as well. How classy. The floor, not even two months after they had moved into the new place, was even worse than the old beat-up linoleum one. At this point, I asked my mother if we should start drying the floor, and wouldn't you know it, she had already asked. The answer was, no, leave it wet. Baffling. We cleaned there for another month or so. I barely felt safe walking on the floor, as it was now a tripping hazard with warped parts popping up. It was also disintegrating. Splinters of wood would pop off every time I swept, the floor now had the dubious distinction of being the worst floor I had seen in a place that wasn't dilapidated. Am I the jerk for giving my mom the wrong start time for my birthday lunch so she'd be on time? I'm 22, female. My mom, who's in her mid-40s, is one of those people who's always late to everything. I'm talking family get-togethers, birthdays, graduations, weddings, you name it, she's showing up late. At first, growing up, I just thought it was because she's bad with time. But as I've gotten older, I genuinely believe she likes making an entrance. I personally find it, one, rude, and two, embarrassing, because it's not like it happens once in a while. It literally happens at every single function she's invited to that has a set time. Many family members have complained about this. Nothing ever changes. It's gotten to the point that whenever my grandma has family lunches or dinners, she'll tell my mom it starts an hour earlier than it actually does, so she'll be there on time. My mom doesn't know that my grandma does this. It's a joke between grandma and I. This past weekend was my 22nd birthday. My grandma wanted to do lunch for me at her place with our immediate family. The lunch was to start at 2 p.m., but we told my mom 1 p.m. I had plans later that evening to go out for dinner with my boyfriend, so I wanted to leave my grandma's house at around 5, the absolute latest, because I needed to go home and get ready. Well, of course, my mom was late. We called her at like 2.30 p.m. to see where she was because, you know, it's her daughter's birthday. She had just left her house at 2.30 and still had to pick up her boyfriend on her way to my grandma's, 30 to 35 minutes away, so none of us were expecting her to arrive until like 3.30 p.m. She finally arrives two and a half hours late from the time we told her. We questioned my aunt and she said she felt bad lying to my mom. Everyone is pretty annoyed, but we all move on. Fast forward an hour later, 4.30 p.m. I have to start leaving. My mom starts getting all annoyed with me that I'm leaving so soon and that she barely got to see me for my birthday. I told her that my life doesn't revolve around her and that she should have been there sooner. She started giving me attitude and listing all these excuses as to why she's late. I couldn't be bothered to hear them, so I left. Later that night, she messaged me saying I was acting like a jerk towards her and it was rude of me to lie to her about the time the lunch started. My mom and my aunt think I'm the jerk for lying to her. My grandma doesn't think it's a big deal and they're overreacting. I came here for some outside opinions. Not the jerk, but stop lying to her. Stop accommodating her. Don't hold up any events or dinners or lunches or anything for her. 
If she arrives to a meal or function and it's over, and the food is either gone or put away, then it's, oh well, should have been here on time. I would never hold up one more thing for her. She's rude and has no respect for other people's time. Am I the jerk for ignoring my aunt and uncle when they came to my house as guests? I, 28 female, live alone, away from all of my family members, working a job that's been my dream job since I was little. I have a pretty static lifestyle that includes my work, sports cars, my house, and nightlife. My aunt, my mom's sister, who's 50 female, and her husband, essentially my uncle, 54 male, sent their only son off to college somewhere near the city where I live in. They wanted to go see their son and asked me if they could stay over a couple of days and see me as well on their way. My mom also insisted I say yes, so I did. They stayed with me for a week on their way to their son's city and nine days on the way back. While they were with me, I got up around 5.30 in the morning, did my workout routine and left home at 7. I came back around 11 like I always do. My aunt said I could have managed everything much better and that there was nothing in the fridge when they came to my house. I told them they could order anything they wanted on my account and there was only fruit and water because that's all I need when I'm home. She also complained that I spent some nights away, which could be avoided, but I'm just used to my routine. My aunt also said I could at least spend one meal with them, which I did on the weekend, but other than that, I've got work. After I explained everything, my aunt said I was being a rude host and that she wanted to see her niece in a much better condition. She even got teary-eyed for goodness sake. I said I can, of course, strive to be better, but this is how my life is, and she came here knowing this. She hasn't spoken to me at all since she went back other than a text saying thank you. My mom says I need to get my life together and apologize to my aunt. Was I the jerk? Edit. They were initially supposed to stay for two days each time, and they asked to extend the visit every night. There's a lot to see in the area I live in, and I have plenty of extra space, so I honestly didn't mind them staying as long as it didn't disturb my routine. Not the jerk. They didn't just come for the weekend. They were there for over two weeks total. It's unreasonable to ask you to put your life on hold for the duration of their visits. Furthermore, they, and your mother, sort of invited themselves. They should be happy for a free place to stay and eating on your dime for a couple of weeks and leave it at that. Slight you're the jerk. You agree to host, then you should host. Either that or let them know it's just a place to crash on their way to and from sun. But as it stands, you knew they wanted to visit you and you agreed with this. So making a little bit of time for them to share some meals, spend an evening, at the very least have some food in your house, would have been nice. Stop complaining about your neighbors. Okay, sure. I had moved in an apartment with a roommate last summer. When we first came in, the biggest part of the sale was the fact that the apartment was freshly renovated and soundproof. This one is important and you'll see why. So when we got in, my roommate immediately fell in love with it and I was too. When we moved in, we were very careful not to bother anyone as we wanted to quickly have a good relationship with our neighbors. Oh, did you see the new neighbors? They only move during the day. They don't make sound during the night. What nice people, kind of deal. And we can safely say it worked. What we did not know, however, is that we were only three renters when we first came in. Us on the floor, another family upstairs on the opposite side, and another one on the third floor, with the empty apartment between us. Turns out, the soundproof statement was accurate, but only in regards to the inside-to-outside situation. When our upstairs neighbors moved, it was a nightmare. Sound from 5 a.m. to past midnight, five days in a row, dropping stuff, speaking loudly, yelling, or walking in their apartment with shoes on. Out of frustration on the fifth day, I walk upstairs and meet my neighbor at midnight. I ask them to cease their activities for the night. I have work in the morning and I cannot be kept up all night. I understand they were freshly moved in and they might have had a tight schedule, but midnight was too late to be moving stuff. He didn't reply and closed the door on me. I go downstairs and the sound starts over again. I notify my landlord and he tells me he'll handle it and apologizes for the situation, explaining to me my neighbor was just moving and that he probably didn't understand what I was saying because of a language barrier. The neighbors were extremely loud. I know a lot of Karens will use that as an excuse to talk about their neighbors, but when I say loud, I mean it. There was no stop to their loud noises. It seemed like they couldn't be bothered to hold something without dropping it, or jumping up and down on the floor, or purposely banging things against the wall. I recorded the event and even installed microphones in my home jack to my computer. 
activating and recording every time there is strong vibration to the house. Over 98 events on Monday, February 14th. I was livid. I send that to the landlord and explain this cannot continue. First, the apartment was poorly soundproofed, which meant we were hearing every sound at all times. Second, we had notified the neighbors about this situation and they have ignored it. I have notified the landlord to awaken them to our situation. I report the issue several times and even advise my landlord that they were very heavy thuds coming from upstairs, which worried me. He answered with, Stop complaining about your neighbors already. I have other things to do. I have answered, Understood, sir. Please be advised this will be my last communication and action to help you in that regard. You know when I said I heard loud bangs? Turns out our upstairs neighbor was doing bench press lifting in his living room, and the heavy thuds I kept hearing was him dropping his weights on the ground. I had warned my roommate about removing anything she didn't want broken from the living room, and lo and behold, four days later, the first crack appeared. Then another. The floor was giving up. I moved the couch out of the way and moved the TV and consoles into the bedroom. Fast forward to three days ago. After another series of loud bangs, I hear a loud crack, followed by an, oh no, followed by very loud noises. I went to the living room to see my neighbor on the ground with several injuries due to the fact that he just went through the floor and brought his bench and weight rack with him. I called an ambulance and the police. The police asked me if I reported the issue with my landlord, which I could confirm due to my communications being made via email. I sent everything and I am now, of course, filing to break my lease due to uninhabitable dwelling. The landlord came in yesterday and just proceeded to explode told me I should have made him aware that my neighbor was doing dangerous things, to which I answered I had notified him about the very loud sounds and he never investigated, and that he also ordered me to stop complaining about my neighbors. It was not my responsibility to go out of my way to protect his assets if he is unwilling to cooperate with me. My neighbors, roommate, and I are now residing in a hotel until we can find a new place to live. We are now also looking towards adding a bit more salt to the injury by maybe filing for criminal negligence against both our landlord and the neighbor. The first because the apartment was apparently having some flaws and the latter for endangering us. Had I not caught up on what caused the sound earlier, me or, God forbid, my roommate could have been under that. Anyway, it was a fun week and I do enjoy the accommodations of the hotel. Never went to a four-star spa-included hotel before. Turns out the chocolate on the pillow is a lie and I am very disappointed about that. Edit. As I have advised to a few commentators, I followed up with my roommate and she did not take pictures of the event. She got a bit mad, I asked, considering what just happened, and questioned my priorities. I then explained that our Reddit story got a lot of attention and some people in the comments requested some visual proof. I will spare you her answer. I will just add that it's okay not to believe this story based on my word alone. If people actually didn't question it, I would be worried. When I posted this story, my only intent was to share my experience and I thought, huh, malicious compliance, neat. If there was a horrible landlord, bad neighbor, Reddit, I would have found prior to submitting this story, probably would have went there instead. I will also add that I'm not an expert or an engineer. How and why something like weights and the like would cause part of the floor to collapse, I cannot say. Was there a structural damage prior? Was there water damage that was never addressed, just covered up? Was the structure just not as sound as I believed it was when I got in? I can't say. I understand some of you might have worked in construction and never have experienced such an event or have actual reasons to suspect a lie due to personal and professional experience. Once again, you can and should question anything on the internet. I just hope you also apply that kind of skepticism, and I mean wanting proof or the opinion of an actual expert prior to making a decision to more than just Reddit posts. For those who made us laugh and those who have spoken to us, who have been encouraging and constructive, people who actually gave us advice, I thank you very much. It was very nice of everyone, and I wish you the best. Am I the jerk for laughing at the absurdity of my wife taking pictures of herself cleaning? I, 36, male, work full-time, and my wife, who's 27, stays at home. We've been married for five years. I have a good job, so I'm happy to support her. We do not have kids. My wife is something of a slob. I know this isn't the nicest thing to say about your partner, but she would happily step over a pile of clothes in our living room for a month before actually folding them. During the daytime, she doesn't really cook, clean, or do any housework at all. She loves browsing the internet and watching Netflix, 
but beyond her interests, she can rarely gather up the energy to do much at all. To be honest, before marriage, when I lived alone, my house was much cleaner than it is now. The bizarre thing about this situation is that she's incredibly sensitive about the fact that she doesn't really do much all day and denies it whenever it's brought up. I do my own laundry, prepare my own lunches, and oftentimes cook dinner. She might do the dishes in the evening, or she'll leave them for the next day. A few days ago, I got really tired of it because a pile of her stuff that I didn't know where to put away had been sitting in our living room for over a week. I told her that she really needs to get it together and learn how to clean, even a little, every day. She fired back that she's not a maid, to which I responded, it was clear, because if she went to someone's house, laid on their sofa, and watched Netflix for six hours, she would have been fired on her first day. The next day after I get home from work, my wife and I were still kind of going at it. She suddenly approached me and showed me pictures she took of herself cleaning during the day, repeating, see, this is what I do during the day. I couldn't help myself and began laughing at how ridiculous it was, then said having a fake photo shoot like an Instagrammer didn't mean she was doing a good job around the house. She says I crossed the line. Now she's sulking in her room. I feel like she's trying to emotionally manipulate me, but I could have pushed it too far. Not the jerk, but this sounds like me before I was on ADHD meds and antidepressants. That's exactly what I was thinking. When your brain doesn't brain the same way as other people, you can actually come across as lazy and messy when you're really just struggling. Yeah, the problem here is how does OP approach this topic with his wife without her taking it as him saying, there must be something medically wrong with you to act this way, which I don't think would go over particularly well. If it's pure laziness, obviously that's on her. And while a cleaning photo shoot is maybe silly, I think this is missing the big picture. Everything else sounds potentially like serious mental health issues, such as depression or ADHD, a sleep disorder, or other physical illness that can cause chronic fatigue. It may not actually be good for her mental health to be home all the time. I hated going back into work, but it was amazing for me to get out of the house. I really think she needs to speak with a professional about the possibility of depression. She may need help, not mockery. ETA, some condensed great points people are making in the replies. Women in their 20s can develop autoimmune disease, usually accompanied by fatigue that ramps up over the years. Even if she did not already have depression, ADHD, or similar, being isolated at home without structure or purpose is a recipe for disaster. It will lead to depression-like symptoms, even if it doesn't become a full true diagnosis. All that said, I don't personally think there's a jerk here. I think she needs a doctor's visit and to get a job, even part-time to get out of the house and get structure and purpose in her days. As with most posts here, honest adult communication will go a long way. Support our channel by joining as a member today and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.